Hi, this is Adolf Oliver, and this is a video clip about plotting points and making line graphs. This is just a warm-up to the uh, whole graphing business that we'll be talking about. Anyway, there are many types of problems where there are more possible solutions or answers than you could possibly write down. So uh, what we do is we draw a picture. We make a graph. Uh, points in two-dimensional space. Anything on a flat surface like this can be plotted on a grid like the one we see right here. And uh, we use coordinates to do that. So, for instance, looking at this grid right here, the horizontal axis is the X and the vertical axis is the Y. The spot where the two axes come together, right here in the center, is known as the origin, and it has the X and Y values 0 and 0. These are the coordinates. Now, remember, when we give an ordered pair like this, drawn in parents, two numbers separated by a comma, then it's to be understood that the first value is the X and the second value is the Y and the origin where the two axes come together is the X value 0 and the Y value 0. Well, let's look at some others. Uh, locating coordinate pairs, like here's an example 3 comma negative 2. Uh, remember, the first guy is the X, the second guy is the Y. So what I do is I say, okay, I got to go three units in X. X is positive to the right, it's negative to the left, and Y is positive up and negative down. So X equals three, one, two, three would be right here, but we also have to go negative two and Y, and so that's down two, and this point right here then is going to be my coordinate point three, and negative 2. Okay, well, we'll be doing more of this in a bit. Uh, the next thing to do is talk about uh, graphs, uh, how we can talk about the different areas, or what are known as the quadrants. If you take a look, again, at a fresh XY graph, like this one again we're looking at here, notice that the x-axis Okay, X is horizontal, the Y axis vertical. Divide the graph up into four uh, equal size areas here. And uh, these are known as the quadrants, and folks use Roman numerals to distinguish between these. For instance, this one in the upper right is known as quadrant number one. I stands for number one in the Roman numerals. And uh, it has X values that are going to be positive. Any point in here will have a positive X and it'll have a positive Y. So I can indicate out here <laughs> that this first quadrant will have positive X's and positive Y's. Now the quadrants are numbered again in Roman numerals but in a counterclockwise direction. You'd have to take some trig to understand why this is done. But the second quadrant is right here. It's going to have any value in here will have a negative X and a positive Y. So I could say X is negative and Y is positive. The third quadrant is down in this lower left corner. And it has X's that are negative and Y's that are negative. So negative and negative. And lastly, the one quadrant left here is the fourth quadrant in Roman numerals. Uh, IV stands for 4. V is 5, but an I in front of it means we're subtracting 1 from 5, so that's 4. And the X's will be positive all to the right here. The Y's will be negative, so everything in here, X is positive and Y is negative. So we can see the quadrant you're in determines what your signs are. A lot of word problems we'll be doing later have both positive X and positive Y, so we only use the first quadrant to plot those. 
But in general algebra problems, well, we're grafting things. We use all four of the quadrants. Well, we said quadrant one, both the x and y were positive. Quadrant three, both the x and y are negative. Quadrant two has negative x and positive y. And quadrant four has positive x and negative y. We'll be making use of the quadrant systems as we go along further. Now, another thing that can be done here, and we'll be looking at some problems coming up to do it. If you know two points, the x and y values on a graph line, then you can draw the uh, graph on the x-y coordinate, and we can also use it then to estimate other values. We'll see that in a moment. But now, let's look at some examples of things going on here. So the first place uh, I want to stop here again is reinforcing this idea of being able to talk about uh, the points, how you can turn around and graph them given their XY values. So here are a couple of them. Here we go. And uh, we want to plot the point X equals 4 and Y equals negative 3. Let's just do that. Notice the 4 is positive, so we come 1, 2, 3, 4. But we don't draw the point here. We also have to go down negative 3, 1, 2, 3. So there's the point right there. X equals 4 and Y equals negative 3. Here's another example. X equals 3 and Y equals 0. Uh, that's a negative 3, I should say. So if x equals negative 3, 1, 2, 3, here we are. y is 0, so that means we don't go up or down in y. We just leave the point right here. Now, you can always double-check these. Okay, if that was our point, we'd say, well, x equals negative 3, and it's right on the x-axis, which intersects the y-axis at the origin 0. So that is definitely the point x equals negative 3 and y equals 0, and we could indicate that. Okay, well, that's plotting the points. Now, of course, we also have to be able to go the opposite way, and if we're given some points, we have to be able to figure out what their coordinates happen to be. This is not difficult to do. Here's the first one we can look at right here. Notice now that uh, we want to find the x value, so from the point you come straight down to the x-axis, and straight down hits at x equals 0. So we know that the x value is 0, the y value is up 1 on the y-axis, so this first point right here is going to be x equals 0 and y equals 1. Here's another one, okay? Notice now it's over here in quadrant 4, and the x is going to be positive and the y negative, so 1, 2, 3, 4. If we take and hit, uh, take the point and come straight up the x-axis, it intersects the x-axis at positive 4. We come straight over to y, it intersects the y-axis at negative 4. So there's our coordinates for that. Always first coordinate is x, second coordinate is y. Now we can go back and review the quadrant business. Here we go. Uh, in which quadrant is the point located? Well, here's the first thing you want to do. Just remember that the upper right quadrant is number 1. Then they go in a counterclockwise direction, so this is 2, this is 3, and this is 4 down here. So if you remember how to label these, it's very easy to see this point right here, definitely in quadrant number 1. Now remember, we did talk about the fact that uh, all the points in each quadrant have the same signs. Which quadrant is positive, has x positive, and y negative? 
once again just make yourself a little sketch here we can do it rough we don't need anything fancy X and Y and remember the upper right quadrant is number one this one over here is two number three is down here and number four is over here now what are the signs any point here in this first quadrant will have positive X and positive Y so there we go uh, the second quadrant will have negative X and positive Y so negative and positive well we wanted of course X positive and Y negative so we were looking for a plus and minus we haven't hit that one yet but it's coming right up you see quadrant number three here the X's are negative and the Y's are negative well that's not exactly it yet that's minus and minus let's look at number four quadrant four has positive X and negative Y positive X and negative Y that's our winner right there uh, we wanted positive X and negative Y that happens in the fourth quadrant now the other thing we're doing uh, in this section is a uh, kind of introducing you to uh, grafting the lines and uh, we want to draw the line going to their points 0 comma 3 and 5 negative 2 well, first point here, x equals 0 and y equals 3, 1, 2, 3 will be right there. So I'll just indicate this one as being x equals 0 and y equals 3. The second point, x equals 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and y equals negative 2, 1, 2, right there. There's our second point. I'll just draw it right next to it here. 5, comma, negative 2. Okay, now, what we simply do now is we draw a line between those two points. And we kind of rough it in here as best as we can. Looks like it's going to be about like so. There it is. So fairly close to it. Now, Remember, we want a straight line going through these two points. There it is. Now, find, use this line to find y, or find x, when y equals 1. Okay, here's y equals 1 right here. Here's what we simply do. Come straight across, okay, and hit the line right here and then come straight down to the x-axis and that's our point right there for x or for y uh, equals 1 this is y equals 1 what is x equal the point right on the line here has x equal 2 so when y equals 1 x equals 2 that's the point we got right there Let's look at one more of these, because we'll be doing things like this in the future coming up. Uh, here's one right here. Okay. Draw the line through the points negative 3, comma 2. Well, let's start doing that. X equals negative 3 and Y equals 2. So negative 3 and X up 2 and Y. There's the point right there that is negative 3 and 2. Okay, I'll label that here. Here it is. And then the other point we want is x equals 3 and y equals 4. Okay, x equals 3, 1, 2, 3, and y equals negative 4. Good thing I took a second look. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the point right there that has x equal to 3 and y equal negative 4. Now you can see why we spent some time, you know, learning how to locate the points. Okay, now we have a straight line going through this, so I'll kind of take my best aim here and kind of get a straight line going through it. Oops, I missed a little bit. Let's pretend I got it right on the point there. And now, uh, use this line to find y when x equals 2. 
Well, okay, here's x equals 2 right here. We come straight down and hit the line, and then we go straight across to the y-axis, and y equals negative 2. So when x equals positive 2, y equals negative 2. That's how we can uh, figure this out. So what we've done is introduced you here to some of the beginning ideas of how this graphing business works.